Hey guys, Ahmed here and in this video I will be showing you how you can apply the Postal's Law in your UX design work. I will explain what it is and how you can use it and also some examples of applications that use this principle well to their advantage currently. Now let's get started. Now, Postal Love states that we should be conservative in what we do to others, but liberal in what we take from them. What this means in UX design is, when a user joins our product that we designed, we should let them have multiple access points for their interactions, for accessing the product, or actually for using certain capabilities to achieve their goals. This all sounds a bit gibberish, I know, but the more paths we allow a user to have in when they are trying to achieve a goal, easier it is it will be for them to accomplish their goal and they will use our products more. Now, we can accomplish this by using three different strategies. The first is when we are flexible on what a user inputs, let's say in a form field. The second is when we are flexible on how a user actually accesses our product. And the third one is we are flexible in basically giving users certain capabilities to achieve the same goal. Now, since the early 2010s, many applications or websites we use are actually responsive, meaning we can access them by using different devices. This is actually beneficial for the users because if a person doesn't have a particular device with them, they would not be able to use your product if you didn't offer them other options. And I'm going to show you how this actually works very well for an application like Google Docs. So right now I'm on my desktop view and this is how the Google Docs application looks like. This is just a sample text that I copied and pasted. And if I were to go to the another screen and this time I am seeing my view as a user from the iPad Air. So I'm inspecting and if a user has the iPad Air settings now, things look a bit more different. And I'm just going to lower this part and I'm going to show the desktop and more tablet difference on desktop if I actually go and close the outline you see there is no shrink of space just the text disappear but in the tablet mode it actually shrinks because the tablet size is smaller the application is optimizing for horizontal space on tablet so that the user can still benefit if they are having difficulty seeing they can just close the outline and read in a much more better manner all right, so how do we become more flexible in user input? This especially applies when a user is in the onboarding stage where they are just subscribing or signing up for your product and they are filling out a bunch of forms. The more flexible you make each input of the form, the better, but this can be also for other inputs that the user has to interact with on use to use basis for your application and that is why we are going to look at the google calendar and how when you are trying to book an event as a user google makes it very easy and flexible for you to enter the date that you are going to use so that you can book events easier in the type of date configuration that you like and let's see that example right now so let's say I want to create an event on Google Calendar. I'm just going to pick here with my mouse, just going to go and click. And I'm going to name this, let's say, event this week. Now, the important part here is this, which is the picking the time. And you can see how the Google chooses to show the information as the day of the event and then the month and then the date, meaning 18, Monday, July 18th. Now, because Google is software calendar is offering flexibility for user input, you could also write it like this, July 18, 2022. And once I press it, it's going to show it the same May, but I entered it differently, but it's still showing it as Monday, July 18, which is how it's supposed to look. I could even enter it like this, 06, or let's say 18, 07, 2022. 18 July again, right? 18 July again, it still then turns it into that one. So it would be like this. And then once I do, once I enter it, it then changes it to the format that it wants 
me to see. A user that grew up, let's say, in a Middle Eastern culture or might actually learn to enter dates different than, let's say, a person from North America. So Google Calendar is trying to give as much flexibility as it could to make the user have an ease of use for the application. Now, what do I mean by offering flexibility for the capabilities? Let's say you have downloaded a new mobile application and you are at the sign up process. If the application only offers you the sign up off with email, you might actually think this will take too long of a time. I don't have time for this and just shut it, up, shut it off. But if the process also included, let's say, login with your Facebook or LinkedIn account, suddenly if you have one of these accounts, the application can just fetch those infos from those social media applications and fill the process for you and you are actually finishing your sign up process way faster. Now, not every user will have a link to our Facebook account or they will opt to use them, but some might. And offering that flexibility to your users for the same end goal, which is sign up, is actually a huge time saver for some of them and they will likely to stick out more using your application. You can also see this flexibility capability approach when let's say you are searching for stuff on Google and I'm going to show you this in just a second. How does Google search offer capability so that the users will have more flexibility? Now, let's say you are a disabled person who has tremors in their hands, so typing comes very hard for you. If you're a user who didn't have disability in their hands, you could just type what you look for, which is, let's say, Backstreet Boys, and you can type in it. But if you were disabled, what you could also do is use the voice capability that Google offers, so you could write Backstreet Boys, right? And I'm just gonna delete and I'm gonna open again and we will write, one moment, Backstreet Boys. And then it will show. Google offering this search functionality in two different ways, whether it is textual or by voice, actually helps users who are having disability, maybe some can't speak and some have tremors in their hands, and Google is increasing its base users because a lot of the functionality can be used by different ways of going to do about them, right? You have different ways to search, whether it is text, you have another way to search, which is voice. And that helps uh, users a lot and it offers them this great flexibility. Thanks so much for watching this video guys, I really appreciate it and if you haven't already, please feel free to click on the subscribe button below. If you do, you will get a notification when I release new videos on my channel so that you can watch them and become a better UI UX designer. Take care, have a great week, see you later. Hey guys, I have put two more videos at the end of this video that I believe will make you have a better career in UI UX design. Make sure you check them out and if you have any questions, make sure that you drop a comment below.